Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. Thank you all for the great response on VACnet in our last episode, of course. We're going to touch on that probably later today or later tomorrow as well. Another episode of CSK News. The VACnet update is doing very well. Some some things going to be updating you guys on in the future as well in terms of cheating. Apparently, as of right now, many cheaters across the CSGO scene are being VAC banned. And of course, uh, some of those are actually false reports as well. So for all of you guys out there who are not cheaters but who have been VAC banned or Overwatch banned, please stay tuned and please stay patient. Of course, when it comes to banning a lot of cheaters out there, you're going to get caught up in a a bunch of mixes out there and there are going to be false bans so I know a lot of my comments on yesterday's video were of course saying Jake I wasn't cheating I was VAC banned just stay patient guys I'm sure Valve will fix it eventually but of course when you're trying to catch a lump sum of cheaters you're going to get some other some other fish in that basket so first off in our short episode of news today please expect an episode later today as well or sometime early tomorrow uh, we have internet issues here right now currently so today's episode is probably going to be a bit shorter and mainly focused around one story and that's the corruption in the Asian scene revolving the team known as Fierce Tiger. If you guys do not know, a couple months ago, this team was actually formed as the Chinese super team of ex Tai Lu and ex Vici Gaming members, and apparently doing quite well in the Face It Major Minor system. We'll talk about that in a, in a bit here. But also, one of their players was actually VAC banned earlier this weekend, and his name was Leo. Now, Leo was reportedly VAC banned during the Asian Championship Series. Now, also later that weekend, though, after they replaced Leo, he has been permanently banned by Valve. The entire team is under investigation. So, a great job by Valve, of course, once you find out one player is cheating that the other teammates might know about that. There might be some other things down the road we find out about. As of right now, the rest of Fierce Tiger is being under investigation, but they are still allowed to compete in the and compete in the minor qualifiers. So that being for the Face It Major in September, they are doing the minor qualifiers. They finished those minor qualifiers this past weekend after one of their members, Leo, was back, and they replaced him with a new member, a new sub no one really knows about by the name of TB Girl. So no one knows who this new, I'm, I highly doubt it was actually a female member. No one knows who the substitute was. They did actually replace Leo with that member, and they wanted to actually qualify for that minor. So they will be at the minor for, of course, out of the Asian scene, they'll be in the minor for the Face It Major. But in big news, it's actually very suspicious because not only was Leo VAC banned previously, but apparently the team as well, three of the four teams they faced throughout the minor qualifying system were actually disconnected internet-wise and they were actually forfeiting those matches, which is in, in not only incredible, it's actually not only miraculous, it's absolutely unbelievable. Yes, of the four matches that this, this team known as Fierce Tigers played, three of those four teams, I believe the teams were as of right now, unofficially, Team TK, Team Roar, as well as the last one was Vici Gaming, three of the four teams they played to make the minor for the Face It Major were disconnected or actually disqualified and forfeited their matches all due to the same reason of internet issues. Now, if that does not seem suspicious to all of you, well, it, it should because it's very, very odd. Of all the entire bracket you guys have already seen, they are the only team to have faced one team who was actually disconnected or forfeited, but not only did they, play, they place one, not only did they face one of those teams, they happened to face three of the teams who were forced to forfeit due to internet issues, and they only had internet issues while playing against the Fierce Tigers. So, of course, Vici Gaming other sources out there as well as I believe uh, it was Vici Gaming's team manager. All these people posting about this. I'm going to post some translation on screen for all of you. The overall TLDR though is, is apparently their internet connection or their internet port, their, their cable was maliciously unplugged or taken out or in other terms some people also said it was cut. So uh, some very suspicious things going on and, and many of you guys are well aware of what happened last week with HLTV. Their Asian, their Asian representatives were being paid off to actually host and actually um, I think it was actually put those tournaments on the HLTV front page. So in in terms of viewership wise, their HLTV representatives of the Asian scene were being paid off to promote those Asian tournaments and those same tournaments were also being fixed. So not only was that corruption last week, HLTV, uh, they got rid of those employees of course right away, but on top of that now we have these issues where apparently it's not, it's been alleged, no one knows for sure, there's been no confirmation right now, but the police have also been notified of this. Vici Gaming, they were the last matchup for Fierce Tigers to play against and that's a big powerful organization. Of all the Chinese teams they face, Vici Gaming was definitely the biggest one, they reportedly uh, actually notified the police about this, and they were trying to get the game, the match, replayed because, of course, that was a big matchup. It was the last one they played to actually qualify for the minor system. So, of course, a big placement there. They are trying to get the match replayed because of their internet connection was cut, cut. Ironically enough, right before match time, actually I believe it was during warmups, and they could not connect back in time. And that way, by forfeit, Fierce Tigers got the first place finish and qualified for the minor. So all of it seemingly so suspicious. It seems to be very. Well 
well timed. And again, I'm not going to be accusing these guys, but it does seem overwhelmingly suspicious. Three of the four teams these guys played had internet connection issues, and the last one being Vici Gaming reportedly had their internet connection maliciously unplugged. So no one knows if there are staff members on each and every team that Fierce Tigers knows, or specifically a staff member on Vici Gaming who somehow cut out their internet. As of right now, no one knows the full details, but the police have been involved. And if someone is caught for this, it's very dangerous. If you guys don't know about the, the cheating scene in terms of also in the hacking scene and the scamming scene online in, the, in any Asian area out there, they have very, very harsh repercussions. We talked about this a long time ago. There was a scammer in the CSGO scene. I believe he was from China a long time ago. He was sent to prison for many, many years for this. They, don't, they do not take this kind of stuff very lightly. So if someone is actually caught for this, this specific instance, expect them to go to jail for a long time. But anyway, bouncing off that and of course talking on VACnet again, I'm continuing to talk to Swift. I'll link his YouTube channel down below. Makes great content. He is in the in the cheating scene for CSGO, so please guys, don't send him hate. He's actually helping us get all this information together for some future stories about VACnet and the updates they've had so far. Uh, actually, he was a big reason why yesterday's video did so well. So huge shout out to him, and he's still compiling information for a future episode for us to talk about to you guys about the VACnet updates that are stopping so many cheaters out there, which again is probably hurting the game of CSGO, which has really been, it's been hard to see so far. We are now currently seeing just how many cheaters are in the game of CSGO as the player numbers still dwindle and still decrease as VACnet is working better and better, the game is doing poorer and poorer, which is, it seems to be a terrible thing. You would think if you're stopping cheaters, the game is going to improve, but seemingly as of right now, it's only hurting the game. But again, of course, we want these cheaters gone eventually 100%, so that's what we're working towards, but slowly but surely, we are making headway towards that. Now, also on top of that, in the thumbnail, you guys see it, one of my friends out there, also in the cheating scene, once iconically known for calling out many pro players of cheating, apparently was VACman a couple days ago. That was, of course, Dan M. He did officially reply to me, and I'll show the Steam message on screen for all of you. Now, reportedly, him and many people out there have not played CSGO for the many past months. He did log on to actually sell his CSGO skins. He was actually playing against someone who reportedly said he was going to report bot Dan M, which would make sense with the new VACnet updates. If he was report botted, if you guys did not watch my last episode, apparently now it takes far fewer reports to get your account to Overwatch uh, or actually banned itself. So once you are in Overwatch, you guys are well aware, majority of accounts who are sent to Overwatch are actually going to be banned nowadays. So it would make sense if you're going to report bot somebody, they might get banned a lot easier now. And that, of course, is one of the big flaws we're seeing so far in the VACnet updates in the past week or so. Yes, we're stopping a lot more cheaters, but yes, it's also now a lot easier to get legit people, innocent people, also banned. So uh, I'm not saying Dan M is innocent. We've, we've seen him use cheats in the past. I just am saying I highly doubt he was using these cheats competitively. And like he said in his team messages, none of the cheats he did use or uh, he did use way back in the day and does not use currently uh, was on his PC. Uh, as far as he knows, has not been have not been uh, actually caught so far. So uh, maybe the report bot thing is, is going to be a, a big update coming soon for VACnet. It's seemingly right now way too easy to report people who are actually innocent as well. Right, last in today's episode of CSGO News and huge thanks to all of you guys who commented on yesterday's episode. I cannot thank you guys enough. Again, like I said previously, expect an episode later today or probably tomorrow as well with a huge weekend recap of all the stories I did miss because I could not cover all of them today. Um, but also thank you guys for the great response. I do believe we're going to have a sponsor sometime soon on the channel, which is it's great to hear and I, I will also keep you guys posted on my job search for esports. It's looking very promising sometime soon. So very last of today's episode of CSK News, I'm sure you guys are all well aware of ESL Pro League Season 7 Finals going on. Astralis making a great run there, beating teams, sweeping teams like SK and FaZe and Liquid along the way, and also re-beating Liquid in the finals there, 3-1 to one in a best of five. Now more importantly though, uh, this tournament actually showed us all of our weaknesses. I'm sure you guys are well aware of the Envious and G2. The French Shuffle is now well underway. We have many tweets out there, and I think that will be the main focus for tomorrow's episode. The French Shuffle is guaranteed underway. For the very, very few of you out there, like the one percenters who thought that G2 and Envious were not going to change rosters, it's confirmed now they will be happening. They will be starting sometime soon. The real question is who is going to go where? It's going to be an absolute flurry of players all around the scene. But also, more importantly, like I said before, Phase Rain, before this series, of course, after Astralis made a swift a swift notion of actually taking down Phase Clan 2-0, in that in that semifinal, and apparently Phase Rain eating a cigarette because Astralis did not sweep Team Liquid. Liquid put up one map against them, and uh, Phase Rain told us if they didn't sweep them 3-0, he would eat a cigarette. I'm not sure why, but he did do it. So here's a quick clip of uh, of Rain eating a cigarette. Quick, a quick notion or a quick you know disclaimer: Don't do this at home. I shouldn't need to warn you guys. This is probably really bad for his health. Rain, so you said on social media that if Astralis did not win 3-0. You would eat a cigarette, and yeah. indeed it was a 3-1 score. You don't have to do this, man. Well, I'm a man of my words, so what I say I gotta do, and, uh, and I'm gonna eat this thing. And we're good. 
Oh, this is dry. Ugh. Oh my god. Are you, are, you, are you okay? It's dry. It's dry. But anyway, that's gonna do it for today's episode of Seasick News. It was definitely a lot longer than I thought it should be, but please leave a comment down below about this whole Fierce Tiger situation. I have never in my time of doing CSGO News for three years now ever seen this kind of thing. And huge shouts to TGC. You know who you are. He helped me with all this information, and it was a lot of information to take in. But as of right now, the Asian scene, the Chinese scene, and mainly Fierce Tigers looking very suspicious. We hope to have them caught or maybe it cleared up sometime soon what exactly happened in that, in that, in that qualifying. But yes, as of right now, a potential cheating team, a team with, who currently had a Vacman player on their roster and has still not made an announcement to kick that player, is in the minor for the Face It Major. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow or sometime soon. Hope you all enjoy. My name is Jacob Mike, you, and I will see you all then. Goodbye.